I carry a vision deep within. In the midst of sand and desert, I see myself standing at a well-drawn water. Carefully I plant trees, herbs, and flowers, and wet their roots with the precious drops. The cool well water attracts human beings and animals to refresh and quicken themselves. Trees give shade, the land turns green. When faced with a barren desert, it requires enormous vision to see the garden that it once was. In 1977, Ibrahim Abulayish and his wife Gudrun decided to move with their teenage children Helmi and Mona from Austria to Egypt to go back to the garden. Leaving his successful career as research director for a European pharmaceutical company, Ibrahim and his family chose to settle in the desert 60 kilometers northeast of Cairo. Ibrahim passionately believed that it was possible to make the desert bloom. And he immediately began to plant trees as well as medicinal plants and food crops in the desert. All the experts, family, friends, everyone, to whom my father addressed his idea, his dream about a sustainable community in the desert, uh, recommended to him to forget about it. Before we came here, it was absolutely desert. So we don't had a street, we don't had water, or electricity, or uh, any transportation, uh, communication. We had to build that by ourselves. In the beginning, the local people were extremely skeptical. But perhaps this is normal when witnessing a miracle. They must have thought I am crazy. <laughs> Ibrahim's dream manifested as the Sekhem community, its name the ancient Egyptian word for the vitality of the sun. The results are proving that a resilient, compassionate group of people collaborating harmoniously can transform a desert into a thriving and sustainable community. Sekim has become a center for ecological regeneration as well as for unfolding human potential. Ibrahim Abelayish called Sekim's ecological, social, entrepreneurial, and fair trade approach an economy of love. For the children of the community and the surrounding villages, Sekim has provided primary, secondary, vocational, and special needs education. In recent years, Sekim has even founded a university dedicated to sustainable development. Sekim has also built its own medical clinic to serve the community. The community has built businesses that provide livelihoods that were unthinkable in the desert environment just a few years ago. Clothing and toys made from organic cotton are sold throughout the world. Herbal remedies that are affordable and create income. Biodynamic food that nourishes the people and helps restore degraded land. Specializing in producing organic and biodynamic food ensures healthy diets. And practicing compassionate, ethical, personal development and education has made the community strong. Growing numbers of people from all over the world have come to second, seeking and finding knowledge, inspiration, and courage. This growing network has helped Sekim to become a thought leader and living example of what is possible. From a harsh desert environment, a diverse, creative, and peaceful community, increasingly skilled at caring for the people and the land, has miraculously emerged. Sekem has not only been growing food and selling products. The massive increases in organic matter, carbon sequestration, and water management are in fact 
much more valuable than any products. SECIM is transforming fundamentally collapsed ecosystems into functional lands. This is exactly what is needed at very large scale to naturally re-regulate the Earth's climate. What SECIM has been doing over decades through peaceful collaboration and unwavering dedication is teaching humanity what we are required to do to ensure the future of our children and generations to come. I'm very well, I'm very, very happy to be here with you uh, on this beautiful occasion uh, here in Dar, Ibrahim Abul Aish, the home of Ibrahim Abul Aish, where we will tonight uh, jointly, as the SECAM community, some representatives are here, as the SECAM Future Council, again, some representatives are here, together with you, Rami and Alexander, from the Home for Humanities, uh, our fellow friends from Transform and the World Future Council will celebrate together this occasion in memory of my father, Ibrahim Abuleish. And uh, for this occasion here, we have thought that we are going to share with you some of the ideas, the basic ideas which my father had in 1977 when he decided that he wanted to go back to Egypt to create his home for humanities, Sekhem. <laughs> home for Humanity, that's a very beautiful initiative that was born out of the need to find a way back to our humanness, to, 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 find, to find a way to connect back to human nature and to nature itself and to, um, to build a network, I guess, from initiatives that provide spaces where, where people are feeling this connection, where they feel home um, and where they feel nurtured by the earth and by the environment, where they take care of each other, where they take care of the environment, but where they also have the transformative mission. You know, it's not only just being there, it's also working on actively healing planet, but also healing um, relationships and the way we do businesses. And Sekem has a long-standing friendship with the founders of Home for Humanity, and Sekem is um, an initiative that is part of the network for Home for Humanity. And yeah, we want to provide a home for people that you know come from different cultures and that uh, kind of in their DNA reclaim desert, but also show a transformative way of how to do business. Uh, with, uh, with human development at its core because it's all about human development. Even the way how we do business is, is so much a learning platform for us. And I think in, 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 in the Home for Humanity that the transformation journey of, of people to learn and to understand how to take care of themselves, the other and the earth is essentially what unites us here. Yeah. For me, I learned a lot in Sekem. It, the most thing I can tell you now is that I make always plans and then it's another thing. We have to be flexible and have to get always new solutions, think about new things and to be always flexible and uh, to get new innovations and 
changing in our life. So this package, it's called Sikum Hibiscus Tea. And it has something here that's called the economy of love. And it's a new certification that we are establishing here in uh, Egypt. Mm -hmm. And this certificate, uh, it holds a lot of values within it. The main idea behind it is to have a balanced economy. So we call it an economy of love because it's not just serving one person or it's not like um, like a selfish economy it's a completely the opposite it's an economy where we all work to uh, like serve each other and support one another and so how we see this in economy of love is that we have to care for four things and be mindful of our impact on four different dimensions as we call them I'm very happy to have come to Sekum and to have to have been inspired by this vision and to live with it and to work with it and to inspire others. And I believe that it will, uh, just from a small initiative, it can ripple and people more in Egypt will be inspired to be mindful of their purchasing decisions and how they impact others. And so, yeah, this is very briefly about economy of love. Yeah, and what uh, has accompanied us uh, along this journey was mainly four questions that reflect the four dimensions we are working on, which is uh, that we want to enable uh, all people that are going to buy, to purchase uh, different products, to ask always the question, what is my personal impact, what is my impact that I have on the environment, on the society, on the individual people, the potential unfolding, and also on the value distribution, the economy part. And um, this is also really a great topic for me to work on because uh, I personally uh, would like to contribute to this movement as well to overcome the anonymous uh, system we are living in and to create more transparency and um, uh, yeah, and more sustainable uh, sustainability in the market and in our system. I came to the farm for the first time in 1978 or 9, I believe. Um, a teenager searching for sense in life. And um, when I came here and I see the pictures today, I'm not sure what I saw. It was not physical for sure what I saw because there was basically sand and somewhere two or three houses and that's it. But I felt very clearly that something important is happening here and I, I felt sense. And this was what I was searching for and this is still what I am searching for and I'm finding here. And the other thing is people. I, uh, this is actually the reason why I love working in nature techs and I would as well love to work anywhere else because as long as people are involved and working with people, for people, and seeing them and myself and everything developing is the reason why Sikkim is my home. Thank you. So let me start with the question, what if? What if you would be greeted with the word Saubona? Saubona is a Sulu word, a Sulu language in South Africa and means literally hello, means literally I see you and by seeing you I bring you into being. Saubona, I see you and by seeing you I bring you into being. So in my opinion this is for me absolutely the core of any kind of education or training programs for adults or consciousness development trainings. And whenever uh, it comes to the question how and what are we doing when, when we offer programs to, to people here in Egypt, for example, in Sekem and Heliopolis University, then we are aiming on the invisible part of a human being because the surface is something 
but it's not the whole human being. We are focusing here on the idea of a holistic point of view. And I would like to show you here this puppet as an example for the invisible. So this is the visible part. And inside, there is a next puppet. It was not visible, but it was there. There is another puppet. It was there all the time, it was never absent. There is the next puppet. It was also there. Oops. And the last one, in this case, is this little one. So let us say these are the different layers of a personality. And we want to unfold this personality in its uh, um, biggest extent. So maybe we focus really on the core of a human being, whatever that is. And so we have to catch or we have to try to catch the, the hidden parts. And this is then unfolding potential. Going to university and taking now responsibility in different places. This is the greatest joy which I can, I would like to share with you. So Sekem is a great place and I hope we can enlighten people in Sekem but also all over the world to develop organization and to support human development. My name is Yvonne and I'm here now in Sekem since 35 years and I like to start with a small uh, talk with Dr. Abulej. In the beginning I met him once and then he said to me Yvonne, I am like to share with you that you have not to focus on to do by yourself alone a good job or to fulfill your task. It's more important in Zekem really to connect with people, to guide people, to unfold their potential. I feel like Zekem is like a school for me. Like I managed to, I was in many uh, situations and challenges which made me learn more about myself and uh, the communities around me and uh, the people around me. It's all about just to create an atmosphere that unfolding potential can happen. And how does it happen through movement? I would say to bring it onto the spot, to look inside and to look outside and all what happens in between which is a beautiful moment of encounter and building up relationships. So this is what I learned and what I'm happy to do in Sekem and what is Sekem actually at all, to have all this weaving interconnections between people from all spheres and this makes me happy to be here in the home of Sekem. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Suhaila and I think I'm the newest person here. I joined Sekem uh, two months ago and um, I just wanted to come here to have a direct connection with the nature and to have a home-like environment. To see an impact um, what you're doing with what you're actually doing with your hands, with your thinking and, and working together with people. Um, I think this is the most amazing um, part, what I'm experiencing every day here. Also, these individual stories you just heard are very inspiring, but you should also recognize that when he came up with this vision in 1977, everyone told him this is never going to happen. There is nothing called economy of love. There is nothing called organic agriculture in the desert. And unfolding potential in a sandstorm is very, very difficult. So um, this is crazy. This is a mission impossible. It will not happen. And against all odds, a miracle unfolded. 
And we are sitting here and 2,000 people are joining us in the SACEM community, working here. Hundreds of kids are going to the SACEM schools. Thousands of students going to the Heliopolis University for sustainable development. Thousands of farmers all over Egypt work organically and their raw materials are processed at SACEM uh, to foodstuff, pharmaceutical products and uh, organic garments, organic cotton garments, which all together are sold mainly in Egypt under this economy of love uh, scheme we are trying to uh, develop over the last 43 years. A miracle, and people are always asking how was it possible. And uh, there are many, many possible answers and uh, wonderful academic answers like those Alexander and his Transform colleagues have developed on the reasons for this miracle. But from my perspective, first and foremost, it is that this is an initiative founded on all four dimensions of sustainable development. As you could hear, we are working on the ecological sphere as much as on the economic sphere, as much as on the cultural sphere, and as much as in the societal sphere, at the same time. If we start here having a vision, then we do business, then we develop also our education system and, and then we develop business here and then we discover we have to care for the earth and then we have also to care for human rights and that is an ongoing process that is a balance when you see that is so imbalanced with here you have to do put effort here and that is the wheel of balance. And uh, to balance all of that is something what I experience very difficult for human beings. Now, in 2017, when we celebrated my father's 80th birthday together, uh, some of you attended, and uh, Rama had a wonderful theater uh, organized for my father on the stage of the Heliopolis University. But in the same year, on the 15th of June, he passed away and uh, is now looking to us from the higher worlds, from the spiritual worlds. We in the Future Council, in the SACEM community, in our bigger networks and all over the globe started to think what are we going to do for the next 40 years. What are the miracles we want to achieve over the next 40 years? And out of this desire to continuously develop ourselves every day and reinvent ourselves, we came up with what we called the second vision for 2057. And this is, again, uh, quite an astonishing story. First, because we decided that SECEM will not aim to grow and develop itself much more and much quicker and uh, much bigger and uh, all these interesting possibilities we have in the agriculture, economic and all the other spheres are not of our interest. We decided what we really want to do is we want to disseminate this vision. Our ideas, ideals, models, prototypes, whatever, into the Egyptian society, into the world. And what really counts is how many of our ideas can be followed by simple farmers, teachers, entrepreneurs, all over the Egyptian society. And hence, we ended up with a vision, a second vision for Egypt 2057. And we envision that Egypt in 2057 will go for 100% organic agriculture, that all companies will, in a way, uh, use the economy of love, all schools 
all universities and all other educational institutions will unfold potential and the communities will work together in a new transparent way based on equality. How does this sound? I hope it sounds crazy for you. It sounds a mission impossible for you, but uh, this is exactly what we aim uh, for. And this is something with our experience over the last 43 years does not make us afraid. I'm very, very confident that with a strong vision and uh, passion, perseverance and love for people, you can achieve everything. And in this spirit, I think home for humanities, which may sound still crazy, is going to be the mainstream uh, very, very soon. We are happy to join. We are happy to today to be a member and a member in this network. And I hope that together we can show everyone in the world who still does not believe that we have the future in our hands that there is nothing called Mission Impossible and to hold it with our old, wise African brother Nelson Mandela who once said it always seems impossible until it's done.